So without uh, further ado, it's a great pleasure to, to welcome a good friend and colleague, Professor Gordon Parker, uh, who's the Sancha Professor of Psychiatry at the University of New South Wales. He was the first executive director of the Black Dog, has published and done extensive work in mental health, um, particularly mood disorders, and is going to talk on a really interesting topic for this afternoon, which is on clinical reasoning in medicine, clinical guidelines or pattern analysis. Gordon Parker, thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, John, and uh, thanks to Servia for the uh, opportunity to speak. Um, it's a potentially complicated topic, it's an unusual one, um, and I will at times gabble to leave enough time for questions. Um, the um, arguments I'd put to you is that uh, medicine is awash with clinical guidelines, and by and large, guidelines are derived from randomized controlled data, and they really reflect group phenomena but not always helpful at the level of the individual. I'd suggest that clinical reasoning and pattern analysis are both integral to interacting with helping people um, who come along whatever discipline or domain of illness that they have. But unfortunately, both of these have been marginalized by evidence-based medicine, dismissed Pattern analysis is simply intuitive and therefore idiosyncratic and therefore invalid. So what I want to take you through are some of the nuances of pattern analysis and its underlying neurobiological processes. And also ask you to contemplate why such skills take such an extended period of time. Um, I'm not sure that I can actually see my slides, so I might have to wander away every now and again. So this is a quote by Barry Nurkham, uh, an eminent psychiatrist, who uh, said that in essence he was bewildered as a junior doctor because he would go about medicine in a very religious way, checking every reflex, doing everything by the book, and in would swing a consultant and with uh, a microsecond uh, identify exactly what the clinical pattern was, come to the diagnosis and, and swish out again. And he was very bemused by this. Um, and wondered whether it was intuitive or an art. I published uh, this autobiography a couple of years ago, and uh, for those of you who are interested, you can um, make contact with Servia this weekend and ask for a copy um, of this book. Um, most books carry or cover one or two themes. This sort of covers about 20, which reflects my divergent mind, but Part of it is an attempt to contemplate pattern analysis um, at very much at the experiential and personal level. Um, sorry, somebody said they can't hear? No, okay. So, speaking personally, um, as an adolescent, uh, my way of thinking was very much focused on implicit, an implicit mode. Uh, it weighted patterns and contexts. And yet, the subjects I did at school, and particularly the medical school, all weighted explicit knowledge and an explicit mode of thinking. So basically, the Krebs cycle did my brain in. Um, and I had great difficulty in fitting into that sort of convergent style. But my first personal experience of pattern analysis was when I was asked to um, take part in a clinical pathological conference as a fifth year medical student at the Children's Hospital. And this was a highly competitive situation where the professor of child psychiatry humiliated and poured scorn on the sacrificial medical student who was asked to present. And I was given a case history and I read it night after night. I couldn't make sense of it. So eventually I rang up my, surg uh, my uh, surgical uncle um, who, while he was a surgeon, was also actually very good at diagnosis and pattern analysis. And I said, what's going on here? I just can't work out the diagnosis. And he said, what's the pattern? 
And I said, I don't know. I said, that's why I'm ringing you. And he repeated it again. Eventually he said, multi-system disorder. He said there can only be three explanations, including congenital syphilis, which is what he favoured. So we went into the clinical pathological conference. I was asked to contemplate the diagnosis, and I hummed and hawed and gradually got to the issue and said, well, of course, uh, there's a multi-system disorder uh, pattern here, and there's only really three possible explanations, and I will favour um, congenital syphilis. And the professor of psychiatry guffawed and uh, added a bit more humiliation, and eventually the pathologist came forward with congenital syphilis. Anyway, I rang up my uncle to say thank you and congratulate him, and he had no interest. He just knew it was right from the pattern. He went from the pattern. So um, as a junior doctor, however, I found that the domain was moving my brain back into a much more convergent, explicit reasoning mode. And then when I entered the ineffable world of psychiatry, where we don't have any benchmark tests, my brain moved back again into an implicit mode. So really what I'm trying to suggest is the field that we operate in can also change our um, style of uh, logic and, and thinking in terms of uh, diagnostic issues. Um, and over the years I've worked in a convergent mode as an editor and uh, in an implicit mode in other areas and I actually quite enjoy iterating between the two modes. Um, and I would suggest that as clinicians that this is actually a pretty useful strategy. I mean, there are some people who operate completely explicitly, some completely implicitly, but an iterative process may well be uh, the best. Now, I now want to move on to what I mean by um, clinical reasoning and pattern analysis. Clinical reasoning essentially has the objectives of coming up with a diagnosis, a formulation, which is basically saying this is the reason why this person has this particular condition at this particular time, and also with prioritised management options and a prognosis. They're the endpoints, I would argue, extremely important. Many people in psychiatry say diagnosis is of no importance. I take a strongly differing view. By contrast, pattern analysis can be a component, doesn't have to be, can be a component of clinical reasoning. And it basically requires you to, ascend the to assemble the diagnostic information that come as both verbal and nonverbal signals to judge whether the overall pattern is consistent with a particular diagnosis, whether it's prototypic or not. Catherine Montgomery, who is a journalist, has written this wonderful book, and I would recommend it to all of you to read, called How Doctors Think. And she says a few things about a diagnosis, and that really is a sense, I'm putting an argument to my view, that in any field, whether it's psychiatry or any aspect of medicine, I believe people should get a diagnosis. She says just having a diagnosis means the rest of your life can start, to know the cause of disease, to have control. Patients want to know what's wrong, if it's serious, how long it will last, and whether it will alter their life plans. And so when I offer a diagnosis, I generally offer a probability with it. I'll say, look, I'm 100% confident you've got a bipolar 2. I don't want to sound bombastic, but really I'm going to take you through why I'm 100% confident, or I'm only 90% confident, I'm just not sure about these features. I'm only 20 or 30% confident we're going to need to do the rest. So not only do I try to come up with a diagnosis, but a probability estimate. And the second argument um, coming from Montgomery, and I can't again read the slide. Yeah. She said, if medicine was a science, then a well-programmed computer could substitute for the best physician that medicine is defined by this higher order component, practical reasoning, or what the Greeks called phrenesis. So medicine is neither simply a science nor a technical skill, although it puts both to use. A physician's diagnosis is in essence a plot summary. And the experts should reason holographically, again coming back to the pattern. Thus best decisions are not just based on the evidence, because they may just come from the literature and meta-analyses, they, and they don't always extrapolate to the individual. But 
she argues they best come by developing working hypotheses and testing and retesting them. So in essence, she's arguing for a pattern analytic approach. The second book I would also strongly recommend is by the Nobel winning prize uh, or, um, writer Danny Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. What did I just do then? So Kahneman also emphasizes the importance of uh, being a good diagnostician. And in so doing, a physician needs to acquire a large number of labels, each of which binds the idea of an illness and its symptoms, its antecedents and causes, and possibly uh, treatments. Uh, essentially, he's saying diagnosis plus formulation. Mm -hmm.